Robert Dakota of Worldviews Media, and I'm here to introduce you to Martin Gray. Martin Gray is a local celebrity of sorts. And not only that, he's traveled to more than 168 countries, filming, documenting sacred sites, and he's going to be bringing you an amazing show Friday night. April 19th, 2024, at the Earth Origin 6 event. Thank you, Martin, for joining us. Could you give a little feedback on how we've known each other and how long we've known each other? Well, I think that probably goes back to Europe. I had been doing slideshows in Finland, Sweden, Norway, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. And you had heard of me, I think it was in Copenhagen. And um, then we didn't meet over there. I think we met um, back here in the United States some time after that. But I, gosh, that must be 25 years. 21. 21 years. Okay. Yeah, 2003. So it's been really interesting watching you travel over the years, watching you put your work together. You have an amazing site, sacredsites.com. You're coming out with a new book, Secret Sacred Sites. It's already published, came out of two, three months ago in six different languages. Yep, called Secret Sacred Sites. It's photographs of lesser known sacred sites. My other books show iconic sacred sites. And this book shows places that are little known outside of the religion that holds them sacred or the regions where they're located. And it made me really happy to see this book because many of them would otherwise never be seen in print. Yeah, that's the part that's amazing. And I think you're gonna order some of them and have them for sale at this conference. Yes, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna have your new book uh, for sale at the conference and you will be there to put a personal Martin Gray signature on there for everybody. I think it's going to be a long line after people see these images. What what did it take to put that book together? How many years was that in the making? Was it over the whole span or was it a specific journey you, you've taken in the last couple of years? No, that book actually has photographs from probably, gosh, I've been doing this for 42 years and there are some photographs in that book, that book that I probably took 35, 40 years ago. There's some really old ones when I was shooting film, and then a lot of them were digital. So those, it's not from a particular time period. It's just from years and years and years of travel. And so still, though, some of those pictures taken a long time ago, they're, they haven't been seen before. This is kind of a a premiere of images yes. that are exclusively yeah. yours and haven't been seen before. Yeah. The nice thing about my website, which is called World Pilgrimage Guide at sacredsites.com, it shows all these images and lots, lots, lots more. But the nice thing about having them in a book is you get them large. Normally, you can only see them on a computer screen or on your mobile device, but it's really fun to sit in a chair, glass of wine in hand, and look at the pictures. Yeah, and we do that a lot ourselves. Uh, I, I enjoy it every time because I learn something new every time. I think your book, Sacred Earth, Places of Peace and Power, uh, is an education, a university education in itself, because not only do you bring the imagery to people that might not ever get there, but also you bring the background to the culture, to the sites. Could you expound on that a little bit? Well, I think two things are important, that you have a parallel journey through the history, archaeology, mythology of these places, which I'm rather a scholar at, and then you have the photographs. And so I talk a lot, and I write a lot about these places, but then to me, one of the ways that I conceive of my photographs is no longer as photographs, but as windows. So you can look at them as a photograph, or you can look through them as a window. And there's this concept in Hinduism called darshan. And darshan means where a person is having a view of the deity, 
when you go inside of the temple, you're looking at a statue, and a Hindu won't consider it as actually a statue of Shiva, but there had been a consecration ritual whereby Shiva had been sort of encouraged to come in and inhabit that statue of Shiva. And so when a person is in front in a temple in front of that statue of Shiva, they're actually in front of Shiva and Shiva is looking at them. They're having a darshan, D-A-R-S-H-A-N, of Shiva, a view of Shiva. But the other thing is Shiva's having a view of them. And the way that I conceive of my photographs is that they're sort of darshan that a person is looking through the window at a sacred site and the sacred site is looking back at them. And so there's sort of a transfer of, of the visual homeopathic essence of the sites. And when you're in front of these windows, the sacred site is looking back at you. So there's a connection, an energy connection going both ways. And most people are never going to be able to travel. It's uh, 168 countries. Um, about 2,000 of these sacred sites, and most people will never be able to do this. And so by taking these photographs, making these photographs, um, an interesting thing when I'm creating these photographs, I'm oftentimes making a sort of prayer or request to the spirit of the place to help me in the construction of the image such that it is more appropriately designed and it becomes a very good channel or transference for the, the spirits, the powers of the sacred sites. I'm looking forward to the April event. It's gonna be really cool to hear you speak again. It's been a long time since you've spoken in Sedona. So this is kind of a, a real treat that if you didn't know it's a real treat, it is. Hmm. Well, um, then we have Robert to thank for that. <laughs> pressuring me, pressuring me, pressuring me. I haven't been doing slideshows for over 10 years now. I've been a a very, very withdrawn hermit. I'm rarely in America, actually. I'm always just traveling as a pilgrim, but Robert's pressuring me, pressuring me, pressuring me, saying, do one of these slides. With. And I feel I should, you know, I, I take these pictures so people can look at them. Um, so come, sit in the middle, sit in the middle if you can, sit in the middle if you can, get there early if you can, you want to get a little altered, have a glass of wine before you can, that's good. And the neat thing is, Robert was going to have me first and then Randall. Now he has me after. And that's the best thing. Because when you see these pictures, it's really nice. Late at night, you're a little sleepy. Then you go home and you go into the dream state. And when you go into the dream state, a lot of times, these, these sacred sites are keys. And they unlock things in different people. Not all sacred sites will affect the same people in the same way. And so when you see these images, when you see these images, something will happen to you. And the really, really neat thing is you may not even know it's happening. It's a cumulative thing. So here's a guy, 42 years, 2,000 of these sacred sites. Something has happened. There's a cumulative effect to this. So just come, sit in the hall, enjoy yourself. You're not, yeah, yeah, just do that, just do that. Uh, we're not only gonna have your images on your presentation, but then in the lobby, we wanna create really cozy atmosphere in the evenings uh, with your imageries projected and we're gonna have a DJ. So I know you're into music and your pictures and the imagery and the space with music really makes a cozy place. Huganuga, as they call it in Denmark. Thanks a lot, Martin. Thank you. Bye-bye.